It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, dig into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is Jane Hammond, and we're going to be talking about her brand new book, Declarations for Breakthrough, Agreeing with the Voice of God. Jane, it is always an honor to speak with you. Welcome back to the show. Thanks a bunch, Sean. It's always a pleasure. And Jane, although you've been on the show many times, I'm still going to ask you to share a little bit of your origin story. Inevitably, somebody watching this, listening to this, they are going to be encountering you for the very first time. So for somebody meeting you for the first time in our talk today, what are a few things they absolutely need to know about you? Well, thank you, Sean. Um, my husband and I have been pastoring a church in the Panhandle of Florida for 35 years. Um, we have come up in a ministry under his father, Bishop Bill Hammond, who is really known as the father of the modern prophetic movement. And we have such a heart and a passion for the body of Christ to actually hear the voice of God and understand how when God speaks, it actually empowers us to change the world around us and actually to make an impact uh, on the hearts and lives of others. And so um, I am, uh, we've been married 40 years this year. We've got three children, amazing children, and seven Seven incredible grandchildren right now, and uh, we are just excited about what God is doing in the earth. Amen. I'm not quite to that grandchild phase yet. I got to marry a few of my oldest kids off, but <laughs> I anticipate in the next five to 10 years, we will have a bunch of grandkids. We'll try to catch up to you. Uh, the last time we talked, we talked about your book, Discernment. Uh, tell us how this new book, Declarations for Breakthrough, how does that maybe pick up, so to speak, where that book leaves off? Well, you know, most of my books are resources to help people understand uh, what God is doing in the earth today prophetically. And a number of years back, I really uh, began to have the an understanding that God had activated a gift of discernment in me. And so I, I went searching for materials and really found very little that was written on the subject of discernment and operating in this spiritual gift. So um, part of hearing the voice of God, my subtitle for that book is um, The Essential Guide for Hearing the Voice of God. And I really feel like people need to understand that God wants to speak to us. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, uh, and, and that it's part of a Christian walk to actually hear the voice of God. What do we do with what we hear? What do we do with what we see? That we need to be able to discern angels and demons and and the voice of God and the and the move of the spirit and and discerning the times, all of these things. Um, but then this new book is all about taking what we hear the Lord saying and how to take what God has said and open our mouth and begin to decree what God is saying. Because Job 22, 28 says, you shall decree a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your way. So it gives us a capacity to hear God's voice, but then actually to say what God is saying, which actually brings breakthrough in every single area of our lives. Well, and I'm going to pull on that thread a little bit more. I came up in a church context where the idea of uh, using decrees and declarations as a part of prayer life, uh, doing life with God, that was just not even on our radar. So, you know, for folks who haven't grown up in that kind of a context where it's more of a norm, um, what would be your encouragement as to why moving in this direction could be a real game changer, not only for their prayer life, but their journey with God? Well, you know, um, when Jesus was teaching his disciples, he said something like, whatever you say, whenever you say to this mountain, okay, be removed and be cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart, it will actually move. And we actually see that when Jesus came and prayed for sick people, he didn't like say, Father, if it be thy will, please heal the sick people. He made these decrees or, or these declarations of dominion. He'd say, stretch out your hand, be made whole, rise, take up your bed and walk. Um, the disciples actually followed in the same footsteps when they said, silver and gold, we don't have, but what we do have, we give you in Jesus name, rise up and walk. So it really, really was more of a decree than it was even a petition before the Lord. Um, we actually see it throughout the Old Testament. God spoke and there was light and there was life in the earth. Uh, we see in Joshua chapter 10 that Joshua spoke to the sun and the moon and commanded them to stand still in the sky. I have to say that probably is not one that we can repeat today. Um, <laughs> but uh, And then we also see it really in the story of Esther when we know that there was a decree of death and destruction made against the Jewish people. And Esther came before the throne of the king 
and he stretched out his scepter of favor to her and he said, what is it that you want? And she began to tell him that there was this decree of death and destruction against her people. And his answer in response to that was not, oh, okay, I'll go deal with that, that decree. What he said instead was, okay, here's the solution. You yourself write a new decree, write it in the king's name, seal it with the king's signet ring, because whatever you write cannot be reversed. And so I really see this as an empowering tool to the body of Christ to not just pray prayers that move heaven, but to understand that we are both kings and priests. And so as a priest, we know that priests bring the needs of man before the throne of God. But as kings, we're seated together with the Lord in heavenly places. And as we hear his voice and understand what he's speaking into any given situation, we then act as the king with that kingly anointing to begin to decree from heaven into the earth realm, the things that need to be spoken. And when that happens, it partners with our prayers and it causes things to shift. Let's get now into maybe some uh, tangible examples. Let's start with maybe where we've seen this in your life, and then let's move out outside of that to may maybe other people you've ministered to. But uh, in terms of your work in ministry, how have you seen the power of God's voice, the power of declarations and decrees, uh, maybe unfold over time? I, I, I guess let's let's think of this as as a timeline. How, what did this look like twenty five years ago in your ministry, and what does that look like today? How how have you grown in your understanding of kind of this revelation in your ministry? Well, we are a prophetic ministry and really started utilizing the understanding that God wants to speak to all of his people. In the Old Testament, God only chose to speak to a prophet here or a prophet there, but really God wants to speak to every single believer. John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. Um, and so kind of as we grew in that, we understood that God wanted to use us to speak to others. And we began to activate the prophetic gifts in personal ministry to others. Um, and I was traveling a lot, going in and out of different churches, going in and out of uh, different regions, ministering to people. And I started noticing that sometimes when um, I, I began to pray and minister over an individual, over a church, over a business or over a nation, it's like I took on this different language and the language sounded more like a declaration of authority. Um, it was prophetic it was what God was saying, but it was like, like I was speaking it into the atmosphere. And I began to study this out and I began to recognize that, that um, God is actually saying, you, you make a decree and I'll shine light on your way. So uh, at the same time, I was recognizing that sometimes when I would go into a situation that I could actually hear in the spirit, sometimes things that the enemy was decreeing over a territory or over a church. And so I began to recognize that, listen, we've got to decree what God is saying. So 25 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I started actually doing that on a regular basis through my travels and started exploring it in the scriptures. And I began to explore it in practicality. And I started recognizing that there's just a certain level of authority that gets released when we begin to, to release this as a decree that is prophetically inspired. So for example, um, in my life, um, we have um, we have grandchildren, as we were telling you, um, and one of my grandchildren had some challenges. He had a uh, compression on his brain. He was only two years old, and he had a compression on his brain, and they wanted to do surgery. However, because he had some other complications in his health, they were not able to actually do the surgery they wanted to because of an irregular heart rhythm and they couldn't put him under anesthesia. And so the doctor said, we're gonna to need to wait for about six months, but while we wait, there's a lot of things that could go wrong because of where the compression was. And you know, he, he lined out all kinds of things, none of which were good. Um, well, one day, uh, it was actually the, the beginning of one year, I was just walking back and forth in my office and I heard the voice of the Lord say, it's time to, to let my people know that this is gonna be a time for divine reversals. And so I grabbed this word divine reversals. I was actually studying in Esther and, and studying about the concept of Esther seeing a divine reversal because she made some decrees. And so I was studying it out that day. I was, I was looking into the word and I get a call from my son who tells me that his son that had this diagnosis actually um, lost the use of his left leg that morning when he got out of bed, he couldn't walk, he couldn't crawl, he was dragging his leg behind him. And he said, we called the doctor and the doctor said, um, 
this is one of those things that I told you could happen if we waited on surgery. And I'm sorry to say we cannot go in and do surgery and repair the damage that's been lost. The damage is now irreversible. So he gets a diagnosis from the doctor saying irreversible on the same day that I hear the Lord say it's time for divine reversals. And so I said, hey, bring him over here. And so we just began to decree, Lord, you've said this. So we decree a divine reversal in his little life. We decree a complete restoration into his body and into his leg and complete restoration into his brain that's been impinged by this compression. And I want you to know the first day we didn't see anything happen. And actually the second day he got worse. But on the third day, he popped up out of his bed, started running around his house and was completely healed, completely restored. God brought a divine reversal. And so I talk about that in this book, how God is, the whole gospel message is a message of divine reversal, sick people having a reversal and becoming healed, demonized people having a reversal and being set free. And so, so it was a phraseology that the Lord gave me at that moment to address a specific situation, but we've seen countless miracles as we have decreed God's time of divine reversal over people's lives. That's just one example of a physical miracle actually happening. We've seen it happen where we've made some decrees uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit for legal situations turning around, for um, prodigal children turning, turning around, different situations that we have spoken into by the authority of the Holy Spirit and actually seen a shift. Well, I think in terms of whether we're just praying for things or declaring and decreeing, uh, we often feel comfortable applying that in ministry contexts or going after healing or you know, going after stuff that we'll put under the umbrella of things that God should care about. Uh, but it, is there any limitation to the scope of parts and pieces of our life where we could start applying these principles? Uh, does, doesn't God care about what we're doing in our workplace and what's happening in our community? It's not just limited to those things we normally feel like we can pray about, right? No, that, that's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. And even in saying that, I recognize that even even uh, almost 40 years ago, when we were first married, I worked out in, in a work environment, a secular work environment. And, uh, and there, I faced a lot of hostility from my boss who found out that I was a Christian. And I, she did everything that she could to try to figure out a way to get me fired. Um, but I, but I did my job with excellence and I, and I, I had to purpose to not give her any occasion to get rid of me. And I can remember even back then going in and praying early, but then also actually making these decrees um, over her office when she wasn't there and just decreeing that God was going to shift her heart towards me. It wasn't just a prayer. It wasn't just a petition. It was actually this decree, Lord, you're, I just decree, Lord, you are bringing a shift in her heart towards me. And Lord, I decree that I walk in favor. I decree, Lord, that you're going to uh, bless me with favor and turn this woman's heart towards me. And I want you to know it was astounding. This woman went from literally trying to get me fired every single day and making my life horrible every day I was at work to one day I walked in, she goes, come into my office. And I'm like, oh, here it goes. She's going to try to fire me again. <laughs> and she said, listen, I feel like I've been really unfair to you. And um, I just want to let you know. And then she just kind of gave me all this favor, gave me a raise he gave me some time off. I mean, it was like from that point forward in that employment, this woman couldn't do enough for me. And I know it's because I not only prayed for her, but I also know it's because I released a decree. So it works in the workplace. It works in your community. It works in your personal life. It works in your family um, that, that God wants us to hear his voice. And when we hear the voice of God, then we can begin to decree what he is saying. We hear his voice through reading the word and we hear his voice by the Holy Spirit. And so in this book, I actually take people through an understanding of how to actually write a decree that's inspired by what God is saying, but also empowered by the written word of God. And we take those two things, what God is saying in the spirit and what God is saying in his word, we partner them together and we write a decree. But decrees are not just meant to be written and read, they're meant to be spoken out loud. So there is such a power when we open up our mouth and start saying what God says that actually has the capacity to shift things. Because the truth of the matter is the very definition of prophecy is saying what God says. 
You say, oh, I don't prophesy. Well, when you say what God says, you are prophesying. And it says in uh, in Psalms chapter 29, verse four, the voice of the Lord is powerful. So when we open our mouths and we say what God is saying, power gets released and things begin to change. Absolutely. We're releasing the voice of the Lord over our specific situation. Uh, I love that you brought in a workplace example. You know, the reality is God wants us to release the kingdom, release his truth, release what God has to say about any situation in all of the places that we have influence. And I feel like we often wrongly limit the places God wants to influence to things that we feel like are more Christian or that fit inside the box that is our our church, our spiritual life. Yet God wants us to be bringing the kingdom and be bringing his truth, what he wants to release in all the areas we touch, the grocery store, the hardware store, when we're driving down the road, whatever and wherever that might be, uh, working to people everywhere we go. And so uh, we need to stop compartmentalizing and, you know, just think we're, we get to be Christians on Sunday, so to speak. Uh, we get to be Christians everywhere we go. And God has things to say about every situation all over. Absolutely. Let me just, let me just add that in that workplace environment, not only did God give me favor with my boss, but I worked with a witch (laughs) <laughs> I worked with um, I, I worked with people that were drug addicts. I worked with people that were um, that were uh, practicing alternate lifestyles, sexual lifestyles. God gave me favor with everybody in that office. And I was actually able to minister the gospel to these people. Several of them got saved. I was I actually able to pray with the witch to repent of her ways because it was just like the favor of God came down on me because I began to decree favor over my positioning there. And that's one of the things too, um, just a slight left turn in terms of just being out in what we might refer to as the secular workplace. um, I spent over a decade working in tech and software companies. That's one of the biggest blessings. Now on this side of things, I work inside the Christian publishing and ministry bubble, uh, but having gotten to spend you know, over a decade, just out in the world, being a Christian, learning how to love people, minister to people, relate to people who are far different than me. uh, That's such a gift as opposed to uh, when we spend all of our time being inside that Christian bubble, it can be really hard for us to relate to what's uh, going on out there there in the world. And I, I love the examples you've given. You made a tangible impact by releasing what God had to say over your workplace and people got saved. People met Jesus. Their lives were transformed eternally. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I feel like when people get saved, they can sometimes get into this place like, I need to be in ministry. And and I, I get that want because you're so excited and your life's transformed. Uh, but God needs uh, just as many pastors inside the church as he needs Christian plumbers and Christian businessmen, Christian baristas at Starbucks, wherever you may be. Uh, God needs us to bring the kingdom in all of those other places, not just inside the four walls of the church. So I, I love those examples. Those are great testimonies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And re- really, we can carry the uh, the breakthrough of the kingdom wherever we go. You know, um, I mean, I'm, I kind of am like you. Most of my life is spent teaching Christians in, in the, like you said, in the Christian bubble. Um, so I minister to people on air, on airplanes. I minister to people in, in airports and in the store. And, you know, as for as as often as we take the time to actually stop and listen for the voice of God, God is willing to speak. One day I was praying for that same grandson who is facing some challenges. And, and I was just, I was just walking the floor and praying and praying, praying. And I, and I was asking him, you know, just like petitioning the Lord over and over again, Lord, you know, you see this situation, you see this situation. And all of a sudden I heard the Lord say, shh, (laughs) you know, like if you'll stop talking long enough, (laughs) we can have a conversation about this. And that's really what I think prayer is meant to be a a two-way conversation with the Lord. And what the Lord actually spoke to me is he said, um, he said Psalms 85 verse eight, and that's, he just gave me that reference. And I went and I looked it up and it said, I will hear what the Lord God will speak for. He will speak peace to his people. And uh, this word here is so interesting in the Hebrew. It's the word Shema and Shema means actually to listen, to hear, to discern, but it also means to listen intentionally and to hear intelligently. So we listen, if we take time to listen intentionally, because there may be people that are listening to us right now that are like, well, I don't hear the voice of God, therefore I can't make decrees. But the truth of the matter is, if we listen intentionally, God will begin to impress on us by his spirit um, words or pictures or 
or sensings that we have that are helping us to know that God is actually communicating with us. So taking time to intentionally listen for the Lord, then he will cause us to intellectually be able to hear what he's saying and give us a strategy to be able to move forward. And in that, the Lord actually gave me a strategy about how to pray and how to decree over my grandson that actually brought some healing. Well, I think that word intentionality is so critical um, because early on when we're, when we're realizing, oh, wow, God's speaking to me, or oh, I have this almost Holy Spirit empowered level of discernment I didn't realize I had access to, uh, but we have to build confidence and know that we are hearing from God. And so that being intentional and maybe being willing to fall flat on our face and not get something right, but keep pressing forward, keep moving forward. Um, Cause as we build and we learn how to discern and hear more accurately, uh, we'll be able to be that much more effective, but like anything else, it takes time and takes experience. It takes a little bit of risk, uh, but that invitation is open for all of us to step into. Uh, and one comment I want to throw out, I had the pleasure of traveling with your father-in-law to uh, some interviews with the 700 club about, I don't know, two years ago, I think it was. Uh, but I got to hang out with him at the gate at the airport and there was uh, an army couple just hanging out. They had a dog and he just started uh, talking to them, struck up a conversation and he was blessing them, decreeing them just in the course of having a conversation. Um, they didn't even realize they were being ministered to. It was a totally normal conversation. And the reason I share that is you don't need to uh, be scared and think, well, gosh, people are going to think I'm weird. People are going to think I'm strange. You can be sharing what God is telling you, what God, how God is kind of prompting you to encourage and impact somebody's life in a way that they don't even necessarily realize that you're doing it. They might not even realize you're a Christian. You're speaking truth into their life. You're bringing breakthrough into your life, into their life. Um, and I, I look back on that experience of just, you know, people are like, oh, Bishop Bill Hammond. And, and they're in <laughs> awe and they love him because so many of us, we've been profoundly impacted by his ministry in many different ways. Uh, but just to see him being himself and ministering to and encouraging a young couple, they had no idea who he was. They didn't even realize he was ministering to them. Yet right. when when they got up to go get on that plane, their faces were glowing. They were encouraged. They were excited. Uh, and so I I just love seeing that. But I, I just share that to say it doesn't have to be weird uh, to decree, declare, to share what God is giving you for people. It can feel totally normal and they'll feel totally blessed by you uh, taking that risk and speaking that out over them. Absolutely. I think that we have a job really to make the supernatural natural, you know, to pull it out of just this kind of spooky spiritual um, realm that people that are out in the world can't relate to and to pull it down into right where people live and to make it real for them. And that's really what I feel like one of the big purposes of the prophetic. We know it's edification and exhortation and comfort, and those are good words that we can use, but how do we actually translate that into impacting pers people's personal lives and actually making Jesus real? Whenever God speaks, it makes Jesus real. I, I can remember one time I was standing in a, a grocery store line and I was, it was a long line. It was at Christmas time. I was frustrated. I was like, oh Lord, this is taking so long. I need to get out of here. I got so much to do. And I felt like the Holy Spirit kind of snuck up inside me and said, rather than just standing here being frustrated, why don't you look for somebody to minister to? And I was not in that ministry frame of mind. <laughs> I was not in a very spiritual. And I was just like, okay, I kind of turned around and caught, you know, just looked at the lady behind me. And I thought, okay, Lord, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to listen. Lord, I'm going to intentionally listen to you for this woman behind me. And so um, after a few minutes, I, I turned around to her and I said, oh, wow, these lines are really long. Um, you know, but I said, you know, while I was standing here, I was praying for you. I use the term praying because people understand that out in the world. I said, I was praying for you. And I just felt like God wanted you to know this and this and this, like, it took me like less than 10 seconds to make that, that, you know, to, to say that because otherwise they're going to like, think you're weird and, and like take off. So, <laughs> you know, so I just said, I felt like God wanted, you to know, this and this and this, and her eyes immediately filled up with tears and she leaned forward and she said, who are you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just, I'm just a believer. And I just felt like God wanted to encourage you with those words. And she said, listen, I said several of those things to my husband this morning, and we've been praying about those things. And I said, I don't even know if God hears me. Wow. And so here she was a believer, but she was like, I don't even know if God hears me. And then here she meets somebody in a line that God basically says, yes, I'm hearing you. And it made Jesus real to her. 
You know, we make Jesus real to people that don't know him, but sometimes even for believers, we have to make Jesus real to let them know God hears them, God loves them, God's for them. So I, I think when all of us start taking this understanding upon ourselves and understanding that we are to be God's voice, we're to be his hands extended and his heart extended to people, um, and we begin to do that, it really does change the world around us. One of the things I, I think it can sometimes get us off track or uh, kind of, I always say that the tracks or the tapes playing in our head or kind of the voice in our mind. Uh, but in terms of the power of declarations to renew our minds, impact our thinking, um, how can that be a part of getting more of what God says, his truth stuck in our heads, as opposed to our kind of our, our own voices, our own doubts, sometimes trying to pull us back down, if you will. Well, you know, the scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the truth of the matter is you're not going to declare healing if you don't believe that God's a healer. Um, you're not going to declare breakthrough if you don't actually really believe that God brings breakthrough into people's lives and that there's a supernatural dynamic. So I think that we're in a lifelong journey of having our minds renewed. And as our minds get renewed, it's not just something to ponder in our heart. Um, but it's actually something that needs to start coming out of our mouth. I can remember as a pastor, I had somebody that was always speaking negative things in the church. And, and when I would talk to them about it, they'd say, yeah, I don't know why I say that because I don't really think that. But when they said that one time, somebody said, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so if things are coming out of your mouth that are, that are negative or, or not in alignment with God's word it's probably because there's something in the heart that is fueling that speech. But when we get our minds renewed, our hearts renewed, then our, our speech, our talk should actually reflect that. And so it's, it's a reflection of what God is saying and doing, but it's also the reflection of a renewed mind. And just to kind of emphasize the importance of actually opening up our mouths and speaking things, I want to remind everybody that Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that actually we're not even saved until we actually open our mouth. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And so there is this connection between what our heart believes and what our mouth says that is a powerful connection in the spirit that begins to break things open. Back in the 70s, um, the faith movement taught us about positive faith confessions, confessing the word. This take this understanding of decrees is kind of taking it one step further and is talking about hear, hearing the voice of God and mixing the now word of the spirit to what the Lord is saying in his word and partnering those two things together to begin to release a decree that does have a power to, to bring transformation. And so I think that uh, for each and every one of us, we can all grow in this. Um, I was in, uh, I was in my, my house the other day and I, and I made some comment um, about uh, my, my granddaughter said, Mimi, aren't you going to have some, some dessert? And I said, no, Mimi's, Mimi's getting too fat. I can't have dessert. And my granddaughter said, Mimi, watch what you say about yourself. <laughs> I guess she's been hearing what I say. <laughs> so I had to say, okay, thank you, Brielle, for that reminder that we need to speak kindly to ourselves, And we need to understand that words have the power to create. Words are powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. And when we open up our mouths and we begin to release what God says, there is power that's generated. Uh, Jesus said that in the book of Acts, he said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you right before he went to, to heaven. And of course, that's the word dunamis, miracle working power. But the way that it manifested is that we know that the people began to speak in other tongues. They had to open up their mouth and actually yield themselves to the Holy Spirit. And they spoke in other tongues um, and it was powerful. It released the power of God for salvation, for healings, for deliverance, and for freedom. So God is actually looking for us to partner with heaven by opening up our mouths and by saying what he says. And it actually does have the power to shift the atmosphere and to shift your circumstance. Yeah, sometimes we need those kids and grandkids to remind us uh, to take God's word more seriously uh, they yeah. don't always have the the same doubts that we have. Uh, I find my kids will often take things much more at face value because, you know, I'm I'm older and I should know better, apparently. But uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes those, those little kids, they put us in our place and like, all right, God, I hear you out of the mouth of babes comes real truth and real Absolutely. revelation. Um, I, the, the last chapter of the book, you've got actual declarations for breakthrough, um, some practical things people can can kind of walk through. I know, um, like I came up in a liturgical context, so pre-formatted prayers were kind of our jam in the Lutheran church. So that feels very normal to me. 
But for others who grew up in more of an evangelical uh, context, uh, going through like wrote or written down prayers, that might feel weird or feel strange. So talk to us about the power of, of using some of these pre-written kind of, kind of declarations. Um, how can those be useful? Well, what I've done basically is I've, I've taken an, a spiritual emphasis such as healing or prosperity or the authority of the believer. And I have done a, a deep dive in scripture um, with different translations that are maybe a little bit more modern. And I have basically demonstrated for you how to write a decree on any given subject. So if you need healing in your body, here's, here's something that you can utilize or pull from to write it and make it personal. At the very end of that chapter, I actually take people through steps, how to write their own decrees and how to, and how to have that. And here's one of the benefits I, I really think of it. If you're, if you're contending for say, healing in your life um, and you've got a particular issue that you're really really focused on you know the enemy may come you may you may experience moments of discouragement you may get a, a, a worse diagnosis you may find that you're particularly challenged on a particular day rather than having to go back and reinvent the wheel every single day of going and finding a scripture or going and find something when you when you pre-write something that you know God says you know it from his word you know it from the spirit and you're able to pull that up and you're actually just say, I come into agreement right now with this decree and you begin to speak it out of your mouth. You're declaring the word of God. You're declaring, it says your, your word I've hit in my heart that I won't sin against you. It keeps you in a place of faith, keeps you in a place of alignment. It keeps the light of God shining on your path and it breaks you free from discouragement and from doubt and fear and all the things that want to come to you. If you have uh, something that is prepared that you know is mixed with both the spirit of God, what God has said to you, as well as the word of God, then it becomes a weapon in your hand. It says to war or warfare with the prophecies. Well, this is one of the ways to take what God has prophetically declared over you, write it into a decree so that you can begin to speak it and utilize it as a spiritual weapon that breaks open your path. And where I think that can be really critical is, is we all have times, days where we're tired, maybe we're not feeling well, or right. we're just kind of at the end of our rope and we just don't know what to say or God is feeling distant that day, you know what? We can go to those things that we've already written down, those things that we've maybe prayed in the past, pick those up and, and keep running with them. Uh, when we don't know what, what to pray, there's just, it feels like there's nothing bubbling up out of our heart. We can just go to those decrees that are already written and start speaking them over ourselves. Uh, and I find more often that when we take that extra step of doing that, all of a sudden that breakthrough starts to come. All of a sudden, uh, the atmosphere begins to shift around us, even though we maybe started in this place of just despair. Uh, when we speak that truth, uh, God suddenly becomes real and comes alive again, even though five minutes ago we felt like he couldn't have been uh, further away. So, yeah, keep keep those handy. I find a lot of people write things like write, write different decrees and things throughout their journals and they refer back to them uh, at times when they need to pull those back up, so to speak. Uh, and just uh, I can never talk about journaling enough. Um, I challenge everybody to get a journal and journal your prayer life and your walk with God. And I find as, as we look back, uh, you know, year after year, we see this rhythm, this path that we've went on with God, where if we don't write things down, we forget the stuff we were contending for right. to two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. And by capturing some of that, um, I feel like it builds our faith when we look back because we see all the ways that God has given us breakthrough and so if, if you don't already journal, I know not everybody's comfortable with that. Uh, I would challenge you to, to start journaling. Even if you don't want to do it on paper, maybe do it in your phone. Keep track of what God is showing you in your dreams, uh, because that's a whole other aspect of your spiritual life. If you don't record it, um, I feel like we really miss out on the ways God is working sometimes, or we miss out on some of those patterns uh, that become obvious in hindsight. So there's my little plug for journaling. I think well, if you do that, it'll change your life. And it helps you to remember all the things that the Lord has said to you in past seasons. And just because God said it three months ago, he may have been prophetically speaking into the season that you're currently in. So if you've not taken the time to actually write it down somewhere, you may not actually remember or have it at hand to be able to know what to do with it. That's why I encourage people when you when you hear something, you should also say, just say, Lord, how do I pray this and how do I decree this into my life so that I can see your word actually come into a place of fruitfulness? And Jane, in terms of whether we're talking about our conversation today and the reader's journey with declarations for breakthrough, like what what's that takeaway? If if they hear one core idea from this message, what's that thing you want every single person to discover? 
when you open your mouth and you say what God is saying, it's going to result in breakthrough in your life. Things are going to shift. Things are going to change. If you have felt stuck, if you have felt like things aren't, aren't opening for you, if you feel like you have all these promises that God has made to you, uh, but you don't know what to do to partner with them, declarations for breakthrough is one of the things that you can actually do. You can pray it. You can say it. You need to decree it. And you'll actually begin to see things shift and align in a way that you'll begin to see the word of the Lord come to pass in your life. And Jane, I'm excited to ask you this next question because you have a website now that we can uh, <laughs> direct people to. Uh, so in terms of the listeners, the viewers, connecting with you, finding out, out more about your ministry, your books and resources, where do we go now to discover you on the web? You can go to janehammond.com. My last name is spelled H-A-M-O-N, like ham on rye. Okay, janehammond.com. And you can take a look there at all of our resources and all the things that can help you grow and be equipped in hearing the voice of God. And like we do with every episode, we'll have links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Jane and pick up your very own copy of her new book. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Jane Hammond. Once again, our book today was Declarations for Breakthrough, Agreeing with the Voice of God. If you'd like to find out more, a great place to start is Jane's website. Once again, you can find that over at janehammond.com. And Jane, I just want to say thank you for sharing with us today. It's always a pleasure. It's always an honor to have you on the show. Thanks, Sean. You're always encouraging and always so full of life yourself. I always enjoy our time together. <laughs>